you will notice that any time a slide showing the picture of a divinity, there is an applause. <laughs> the reason for that is this. An applause in African traditionalism is a prayer. A clap is a prayer. An applause can mean praise God. To honor the gods and goddesses, it is the appropriate thing to do. In natural life, when a king walks into a room, everybody is supposed to rise and clap. When a prime minister or a president walks into a room, everybody is supposed to rise and clap. A divinity is above all the two. A divinity is above a king, it's above a prime minister, and it is also above a president. So the reason why you are hearing the applauses as you see the pictures or the slides containing the divinities, the gods, the goddesses, is because of the fact that they need to be recognized as such. Welcome to Divine Speech in African Traditionalism. I am your host, Augustine Ayinbisa Ayela. To seek permission to speak, I write before my father and my mother, the two individuals who taught me right from wrong. I write before my grandfather and grandmother, whom I call my first ancestors. I write before the deities, the land deities, the water deities, and the sky deities. I rise before the goddesses, especially the goddess Maat, to grant me balance so that I make this presentation without offending another human being. I rise before the gods, especially the god Jehuti, the god that has endowed me with the wisdom of speech to do these presentations on a monthly basis. And finally, I rise before the Supreme Being, the amalgamated rulers of the world or universe, whom my tradition calls Nawene, to grant me stay in power so that I make this presentation for people to learn with this prayer, I know I'm permitted to speak. Five years ago, Divine Speech in African Traditionalism debuted with the title, What is African Traditionalism? It went on to answer the question thus. African Traditionalism is based on teachings, practices, and rituals that lends structure to indigenous African societies. It is based on a belief in a divine authority with lesser divinities as assistants. Over the years, DSAT has tried to clarify certain false myths about African belief systems as well as norms by non-Africans. I will admit that some African traditionalists lack certain historical facts about their way of life. And because of that, 
they are in no position, or rather they are in the disadvantage in defending their way of life. Well stated, African traditionalism is defined as a way of life instead of a religion. A man without the knowledge of where he has been knows not where he is or where he is going. Open and close quote. What does this mean? What does this quotation, a man without knowledge of where he has been, knows not where he is or where he's going? As I read this, or as I read this over and over again, the sentence is self-explanatory. But it is not simple to answer the question, what does it mean? We can argue that there are many people in this world who have no knowledge of history, yet live very well without any problems. Carter G. Woodson called this the world's best kept secret. Earlier in his life, this was the observation Dr. Wooster made regarding the world's best kept secret. He said, the history of African Americans is the world's best kept secret. At some point in his life, he modified that statement to include Africans worldwide. Carter G. Woodson then revised his statement to read, quote, the history of Africans worldwide is the world's best kept secret. Carter G. Woodson went on to define a secret thus. A secret is described as something known only to a certain person or persons and so purposely kept from the knowledge of others. Open and close quote. It was sad for Dr. Woodson to observe after meeting people of African descent who knew nothing about their history. His conclusion was that most people of African descent know little or nothing of their recent history, let alone their ancestral history, which includes major accompl accomplishments in every endeavor known to man. He went on to state that I have met math teachers who knew nothing about African contributions to mathematics. Ministers who could not properly place African people in the Bible. Physicians who had never heard of Imhotep. And students from Southern Africa who knew nothing about Nile Valley history. Open and close quote. One factor, he concluded, was that all these people had, rather one factor that all these people had in common was that they had been educated by the very people who had written them out of history. Determined not to disappoint ancestor Kara G. Woodson, divine speech in African traditionalism is introducing this topic as a historical narrative 
to educate African traditionalists, African traditionalists to be well positioned to defend their way of life. If anything, it is African traditionalists who can claim their belief system directly from the gods and goddesses in this creation story. The man fight, and I'm using two words here. First word is man fight, spell M-A-M-P-H-I-T-E, and that is Manfi from Eastern region of Ghana. And the modern Memphis, or Memphis, where you can say Memphis, Tennessee, or Memphis, Egypt, with the spelling M-E-M-P-H-I-S. So the Memphis or Memphis, Memphis creation story will show the direct claim or transfer of knowledge from various gods and goddesses to humans. It is African traditionalists who believe in their ancestors, the deities, gods, and goddesses, and a supreme being. Let us look at slide one for the defini definition of African traditionalism. What is African traditionalism? African traditionalism is based on teachings, practices, and rituals that lend structure to indigenous African societies a belief in a divine authority with lesser divinities as associates. Slide two shows none. Water, a mass of water, indicating why water is the source of all things. This is endless water called Nun. And this is the hieroglyphic or the Medoneta writing of water to your right. Water is the source of all things. Even though water is a life force in the form of a liquid, as you can see from this slide, African traditionalists believe that water has a human form. Back at the time of creation and even now, slide three shows that. This is the human form of water called noon in a colorful African dress. So this is the human form of water. So we see water as liquid, but it's a human form of water. And Africans have a picture of this water. According to the Memphis theology, creation came in three stages. Part one were the gods and goddesses of chaos. Part two were the gods and goddesses of order. And part three revealed the primate of the gods or the gods of gods through whose utterance creation was accomplished. Let's talk about part one, the gods and goddesses of chaos. The primate of the gods was called Pata. Conceived in his heart everything that exists, and by his utterance created them all. 